welcome back. And tonight we're enjoying again some of the classic moments from over 32 years of Coronation Street. Now, back in 1964, a woman moved into number 13. She was to stay there for 23 years. As well as becoming the most reliable nosy parker in the street, she also went on to have a rose named after her. Despite the curlers, she became a pin-up for British soldiers in the Falklands War and was voted fourth most popular woman in Britain behind the Queen, Queen Mother and Princess Diana. In short, she became a national institution. Thora Heard takes an affectionate look back at the cleaning lady from number 13 who became a legend. You sat alive with the sound of music. La -da 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 -da. <laughs> the unmistakable singing voice of Hilda Ogden. That shrill voice was just one of Hilda's trademarks, along with her three curlers, the neatly tied turban, and that famous floral apron that she never seemed to take off. Now, Hilda lived here, number 13 Coronation Street. It might not look much to you and me, but Hilda loved this little end terrace. It was her pride and joy. She did all she could to make it into a palace in which she was the queen. The three ducks became a permanent fixture, and of course there was her beloved Muriel. Oh, sorry, Muriel. <laughs> oh, me Muriel! Oh, easy, easy. Oh, me, me, me lovely Muriel. Look, I'll make some bits and put it right and bob your uncle. Oh, look at it, all stained and all. Oh, you've ruined it, you great big fat lump of human uselessness. I can't even leave you to have a bath on your own without you flood the house out. I didn't know you were going to leave the taps on in dinner. Oh, go on, try and wriggle out of it. Go on. Well, you'll not. Not this time, you won't. Oh, just look at it. Me lovely Muriel, all wrinkled and stained. Well, folks might not think it's a stain. What will they think it is, Stanley? Well, I think it's a... a cloud on the horizon, you know. <laughs> Poor Hilda. She did try to improve her lot in life, but Stanley could always be relied upon to ruin it. She married him for better or for worse, although she couldn't have known that it would nearly always be for the worst. Hilda was always trying to find work, while Stan was always trying to avoid it. It was up to Hilda to keep the food on the table. What's oh, Sam? That a couple of grilled over souls what shrunk. Oh, they're pilchards, you crater. You've had pilchards before. I had them during the war. You've had them since? Not when I'm hungry. Well, when else would you eat them? Oh, snacks. In between. They're not a dinner. Well, today they are. They're cold. Oh, anything else? Would you like to have them weighed and measured and their photos took before you condescend to eat them? You can't give them for a dinner to a working man in the middle of February. Quite right, Stanley. I wouldn't give them to a working man. But since you don't come into that category, there's no problem, is there? Now get a mat. I like someone solid. Oh, Stanley, you are somewhat solid for the neck up and down. Do you have to look at them as though they're poisoning you? You know, they're starving millions in Africa to be glad of them. Well, they can have them with my compliments. They're tasty, they're nourishing, and they're cheap. Which, since it hadn't permutated your thick skull, is the reason you're getting them. Now, when you can give me housekeeping money, what runs to rump steaks, Stanley, you can have rump steaks. You're not skint again, are you? No, but I'm down to my last five million. Well, of course I'm skint, you great chuff. What with Eddie being away and no rent coming in. And I'm down three quid on my birthday present. I bought you that. Well, I give you the money, didn't I? Well, I didn't get no change, I seem to remember. Now, just shut up and get them pills you'd set. And let me try and pretend for five minutes that you're not here. Given the state of Hilda's own home life, who could blame her for taking more than a passing interest in everybody else's? She could never resist the urge to twitch her neck curtains. Hilda was one of the street's most dependable gossips. Whatever was going on, she always knew about it. And when she didn't, it was up to her to find out. Hang on. Oh, uh, hello, Deirdre. I was just, um... I was just going. I've been uh, cleaning up for him. So before you go... Yeah? You know that 25p you've just conned me out of? What 25p? You can earn it by putting these on that bed. Oh, pink sheets, say. You don't want me to give him a squirt to channel number five and all, do you? Whatever turns you on. You know, I'm not sure I should be a party to this. 
Do what? Whatever it is you've got in mind. What have you got in mind, Mr. Fairclough? Hang on. Ah, that fooled you, Lamb Fairclough. 